اوكي جود جست ريمايندر صغير يعني على الاحداث اللي باش يصير الكل دونك ريجيونال اونلاين ديبيت باش يكون يوم 9 ماي اون ساتردي ذا سيم تايم از ذس ميتينغ يوم 6 ماي وي ويل هاف اور ماك ديبيت also at the same time and uh, today we have the uh, training and uh, uh, other uh, small sessions that we are, we are, we'll talk about later. Uh, first of all, let me introduce the rest of the team. Uh, uh, as master facilitators from Tunisia, we have uh, with us today Reem Mashriqi. Hello, Reem. Hello. Hello. Marwa Sherni. Hello, Marwa. Hi, guys. Bassem Suisi. Hello, Bassem. Hi, guys. Uh, also, we have uh, our debaters uh, from the region, uh, Adlan from Algeria. Hello, Adlan. Hi. We have also Fatima from Morocco. Hello, Fatima. Hi. And Marwa from Lebanon. Hello, Marwa. Also from from the BC staff from Tunisia, we have uh, Rima and Rahma. Hello, Rima and Rahma. Hi, Ali. Hi. Hi. And also we have our peer facilitators from Tunisia. They will be uh, playing the role of reporters during the debate. Uh, they will be taking notes and uh, taking the uh, most important ideas that were that will be um, uh, dragged into the debate. Uh, we have, do we have Saddam here with us or not? Yes. Hello, Saddam. Hello, everybody. Merci, um, Ale. Thank you. So I will be the moderator for the debate. And I'm glad to see uh, a lot of uh, familiar faces and new faces uh, within the project. Um, and I'm, former, I'm a former uh, debate trainer. And um, I was project manager for uh, Young Arab Voices, so the uh, the grandparents of uh, the grand the grandfather of Young Mid Voices, and um, I'm a debater also. So I'm glad to be back uh, again. In the game. Thank you very much, Saddam. We are very glad to have you here with us today, and uh, for the, in the regional debate also. Uh, I would like also to to finish uh, introducing uh, our peer facilitators. We have Amini Hamouda. Hello, Amini. Hello, Noor. Hey. Hello, Arish. Hello. Hello, Ines. Hi, guys. And Tasneem. Hi, Tasneem. Tasneem, are you listening to us? It's fine. I, I think Tasneem is having uh, some kind of an issue with the, the, the app. I'm Tasneem, glad are you listening? I'm glad we have more, more, more ladies than, uh, than guys here. <laughs> this is, this is the case right. always. <laughs> <laughs> privilege, always a privilege. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think we can start uh, by the first session. It will be an ex an export format training delivered by Irim Mishrqi. And after that, we will have a sharing of experience uh, delivered by Marwa Sherni. Also, we will have, uh, after that, a session delivered by Bassem Swisi, uh, who will be uh, providing us with links and references. And finally, we will uh, get to know the sides of the mark debate and the regional debate and choose the mark debate motion. Uh, I think we can start with The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you all for being here. Uh, first, I'd like to start by thanking you for uh, being with us today. Uh, as you can see, this is an online training, uh, mainly a reminder of the Oxford style debate uh, format. Now, in Young Mediterranean Voices, we have been using the British parliamentary format. This year, 
uh, and starting from last year in Tunisia, we are trying to focus on the Oxford style debate format, mainly for this reason. Now, as you already know, our objective, our main objective is to action. That is how we can bring real change to the status quo, how we can actually, uh, that is, um, implement policies. And we found out that the most, uh, that is, uh, adapted form to uh, this kind of implementation of policies and introducing some kind of change is the Oxford style debate format. And we're going to see that, uh, we're going to see uh, why do we believe that uh, this is the case. So first, uh, if, you are, if you are to start, uh, the Oxford style format, how is it different? I mean, have you uh, got any, any idea about um, the Oxford style? What are the differences maybe between uh, Oxford style and uh, the DP format? I encourage you all to participate if you have any ideas about the Oxford style format. Yes? So uh, the main difference, uh, I think, like very much so, is uh, we have like uh, just four participants, four debaters. Uh, mm -hmm. And like the British uh, parliamentary style, that we have eight uh, debaters. All the right, thank you. Okay. So this is the main feature. Well, well, before starting to talk about the structure of the debate itself and the, of the format itself, when we talk about Oxford style, uh, we are talking about uh, a debate that actually takes place in real life. That is, uh, the DP format, it does take place in, that is, in real life, but the Oxford style format kind of gauges uh, some kind of change in voter support so that's why we are uh, that's why we are trying to use it in order to bring actual change. So if you can see on my screen here, can you can you all see my uh, screen? Yes. So here uh, the duration of the the debate uh, is up to an hour and fifteen minutes. Why am I saying up to an hour and fifteen minutes? Mainly because the Oxford style format has a lot of variation. So this is by far not the only. Uh, format, but we have chosen this uh, format for our online debate and for uh, the YMV uh, program. So online, you will find a lot of variations, but this is what we have uh, that is uh, chosen uh, for you. All right. So up to an hour and uh, 15 minutes. The participants. So we have one moderator, and the moderator is very important. It's going to be uh, for them. Okay. Uh, the moderator is very important, and we're going to see why. Uh, we have chairs two chairpersons, up to two mainly. And we have four debaters, unlike the DP, uh, the DP which we have eight debaters, and we have an audience. Now, usually in the DP, yes, we can find an audience, but the, the, that is the thing that changes here in the Oxford style format is that we are going to actually, in, that is, um, uh, let the audience participate, and we're going to see how. So of course, we have uh, two sides, the government and the opposition, prime minister, the deputy prime minister, and the leader of opposition and deputy leader of opposition. Now, the structure of uh, the Oxford style. Usually, when we talk about the BP, we're talking about format. the format. We're talking about, uh, that is, uh, the roles, the different roles, who speaks first, et cetera. Well, we're going to do the same with Oxford uh, style. First, we have an introduction. Now, when we are talking about the introduction, it's the moderator who starts with the introduction. It's the moderator who welcomes the audience, who welcomes the debaters. And uh, can you guess what can we talk about in the, uh, the introduction? Sorry? The introduction. Yeah, so it's like setting, it's, uh, it's, uh, it will be probably setting the, um, the topic. So it's like putting it in the context. Yeah, this is the yeah. classic. This is a classic way of uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, of the Oxford. So it's like you can like uh, it's a good practice of watching Oxford Union debating. Even though it's like I think the Oxford Union debating debate um, structures is generally it's between two people, and they have another one where they bring only one, which is a more like a lecture than a debate. But they they have different varieties, but yeah. uh, it can be interesting to get some inspiration from there. Exactly. So 
So uh, what we're going for here, here is the introduction. So the moderator is, has the resolution, you know, he, ha he or she has a bill that is going to introduce. So uh, they, uh, or the moderator has to set this motion in context, all right, has to the, the causes, the problem. And then we have, lots of them should be knowledgeable, well informed about the resolution, mainly because and we're going to see why, but because we, there is a lot of interaction between the moderator and the debaters, so they really have to know about the motion and about the resolution in order to actually ask questions and be able to foreground, that is, the, um, uh, the motion in context. So introduces the motion, foregrounds it in context, reminds the debaters, of course, of the code of conduct and encourages the audience to ask questions and interact with the debate. This is the first part, which is the introduction and the welcoming. And then we have... A Wait, I have, I have a question. Yes? Um, I don't know who, who picked the motion for dissolving the, uh, the uh, World Health Organization, because it's a bit... I know, I know it's not this, the right space, but like I'm interested in knowing the background for, for, uh, for, for such a choice, because it's like it's like if it's a policy debate, it would have been more interesting to tackle it from reducing the budget uh, or like looking at what the U.S. made. So that would be more like there, there would be more like um, more arguments from both sides than like going for the extreme one of dissolving. So uh, so it's but there is there is still space because I was thinking about the motion. But in all cases, I'm just interested in knowing a bit of the the background reflection for picking such choice. Okay, so to, to foreground that is uh, um, the motion in context, you know, how we, we choose this, it was the MF of Tunisia. Uh, we, uh, we are looking at, um, that is, uh, the response of the, the, uh, the that organization uh, that is towards the COVID-19 outbreak. And we have seen a lot of responses from policy makers and from decision makers who are who are saying, who are criticizing uh, the, the World Health Organization for its response. Uh, some say it's slow. Some say that they're not doing uh, enough. Uh, so that's why we, we try, we, we were trying that is to look, uh, we would try to steer away from the, con the, the, the consequences, the immediate consequences of COVID-19 outbreak into something that is uh, bigger, like the World Health Organization. That was um, the context. Yeah, but like going from going from criticizing to dissolving, it's like uh, on on international level policy, it's like like this. But anyway, it's not a problem. Okay, it's uh, this is just like just to to prepare as well from my side because um, because it would be interesting if there is like people who are asking such questions. So in order to be all on the same level of knowledge, mm -hmm. but anyway. Okay, I will manage. I will manage a way to. <laughs> uh, we try to, yeah, we tried to go a bit. Uh, we're a bit hardcore on this motion, okay? This all the uh, World Health Organization. All yeah, right. Okay. Uh, this, do you want to if I, uh, I may uh, add uh, something in regards to this, I mean, it's pretty pretty hardcore to dissolve the uh, WHO, especially with recent comments coming from leaders of the world. But the idea was to look at the, um, when we started uh, thinking about emotion for the debate, we brainstormed a lot. We came up with a lot of ideas, um, but we, we resolved to uh, dissolving the WHO because we looked at it as the house or the government represented, uh, representing uh, the um, international community. Uh, looking at WHO as a component that is not needed anymore. Um, and that would be sparked by um, the response to COVID-19. Um, the idea is to go beyond the COVID-19 uh, crisis and look at it from a more sustainable uh, point of view. So we didn't want to look at reducing budgets or reducing um, staff and uh, incentives. We want to look at it as a whole organism, whether it is um, necessary or efficient to have it and how sustainable it is to have it in place um, in the 21st century. So maybe that's more of an, uh, a background idea about it. Yeah. And like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You can play on that. You can say it's like, uh, we want to dissolve it to have a new, a new World Health Organization, which is better, uh, yeah. better made. So it's like, I know, it's like you can find out uh, tricks to get, to get over this. 
So yeah, I'm, like I'm, the I'm, EU, like the African Union, like uh, yeah. the UN itself. They all started somewhere and they they evolved into somewhere something else. So by dissolving the WHO does not mean that we do not need, I mean, these are all cheats for the government and the opposition now, but that we do not need um, a body taking care of health internationally, but maybe we need something more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's clear. Thank you. Thank you all right, uh, Inita, do you want to say something? Inita? Okay, so back to the structure of the Oxford style uh, here. Uh, so after the introduction, of course, after um, the moderator uh, foregrounds um, the motion in context, just like we've been doing right now, uh, there is the initial vote, okay? So, and yeah, as you can see, uh, number two is the initial vote, and then we have a final vote. So, uh, so can you, I mean, as you can guess, there, there, there bound to be some kind of change. So um, that's why, Oxford style is the most suitable one for bringing actual change because there is bound to be some kind of change between the initial vote and uh, the final vote. All right, so uh, the initial vote, the moderator asks the audience to vote for the resolution that is for the bill that is being introduced here in the affirmative, the negative or undecided, okay? So uh, mo most, uh, mostly in, in uh, Oxford style um, debates, uh, usually they would, uh, they would actually um, encourage people to have these three uh, that is points of view even i mean even undecided is a is a reasonable uh, point of view so the affirmative negative or undecided and then we're going to see what happens so then we have um, the opening uh, remarks now we are actually going into uh, that is the the actual breakdown of the structure of uh, of the uh, Oxford uh, style. So the first one, we have opening remarks, which spans, uh, that is the duration of uh, 20 minutes. Five minutes for each speaker with alternation between government and opposition. Of course, there is always alternation between government and opposition, meaning. Now we have the total of opening remarks, 20 minutes. So five minutes for the prime minister, then five minutes for the leader of opposition, five minutes for the deputy uh, prime minister and uh, five minutes for the deputy leader of uh, opposition. Now, now, opening statements should be prepared in advance. Of course, um, when we talk about opening remarks or the opening statements, they are prepared in advance. Why are we saying this? Because actually the rest of the debate is impromptu or improvised or what happens on the spot, whereas this statement uh, is prepared. Uh, it should be well researched, which is pretty fair because you can prepare it, and based on data and solid uh, arguments. Now, yes, uh, just just like uh, will we have a special platform for collecting the votes for, uh, or like are we going to use Zoom? I mean, it's possible to collect uh, that is uh, votes uh, on Zoom. There, there is a poll. It's going uh. to be used. Okay, I will, uh, okay. Okay, so, so just, just to know how we are going to do that. So just by, by chat or, uh, or there, is a, there is a button somewhere, okay. Okay, you'll get all the details for them, okay? So we'll okay. have like uh, an online, it is a uh, debate and Oxford style with all the requirements, okay, just online. Okay. All right, so prepared in advance, well researched based on data and solid arguments. Can you guys, um, uh, add something, how the opening remarks or the opening statements by both opposition and government should be like. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, if you want that, that is about the content. Ines, do you want to say something? We can't hear you. Hear me. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, so my question is about the opening remark. Here in the opening the remark, for example, the prime minister will be presenting what argument in favor of his side or what? In five minutes, you'll be presenting argument number one, meaning? No, I mean, when we talk about Oxford style, it's not about argument number one and argument number two, like the, the BP format. It's more about, uh, that is, introducing a policy. 
here we're talking about the Oxford style. So the government has to actually introduce a, a policy that is well researched and based on data. All right, that is a, a full policy with with the, with the context, with the procedure, how it is. Uh, I mean, uh, with the recommendations and everything. Okay. Meaning, please, meaning, if I am in favor of dissolving the World Health Organization, my job at first is to present an alternative. That's it. To, pre to present an, al an alternative? Yes, I if I offer you. this one. I mean, those are two approaches, I mean, but the, uh, that is presenting an alternative or giving a policy. But here, if you are a government, you have to present your policy. You have a policy which is dissolving the World Health Organization. So you have to give us the details or uh, your case on how you're going to dissolve, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the World Health Organization and why, et cetera. So your case, that's, that's what you should okay. do. As an, uh, as an opposition, oh, of course, um, if you're going to give an alternative, there are two approaches, whether you're, you are going to give an alternative or not. It depends on your approach, and I think it will save the government if you give them an alternative. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. so, all right, who wants to... I can see the two participants are, want to... Okay. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Marwa from Lebanon. Uh, I'm a, I want to ask, uh, now we are discussing the roles of each speaker. And for example, we started from the prime minister that he's involved or she's involved to give us the policy, a detailed policy, is a well-structured and solid uh, uh, policy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tasneem, mm -hmm. do you want to add something? Tasneem, can you hear us? I don't think she can. All right. Can I? Adlen. I'm sorry. Tasneem, okay. then This is not Tasneem, this is Fatima from Morocco. Oh, sorry, Fatima. Okay, Fatima. It's okay. Um, I'm just a little bit confused because um, you said we're going to have to present um, a policy proposal, right? Yes. Now, do you have to back it up with arguments on why you have chosen that proposal or you just state your proposal, this is it? And, and yeah, so you have to give your arguments first. I have to give your argument. Of course, you are two speakers who belong to the government, for instance, or to the opposition. So mm -hmm. you, you introduce your policy, you back it up, and then, of course, your, uh, your deputy is going to do the rest. Keep backing up that is um, the policy. Okay. I got it. Thanks. I have a question. Ooh. Concerning the point that uh, Fatima addressed, uh, addressed right now, uh, so the uh, the first speaker from the government will come and uh, take the floor, and then uh, he or she will um, will set the policy, right? Yes. Oh, not giving any argument because uh, the the argument part is for his second leader, or yes? Not necessarily. I mean, you are going to back it up. I know that sometimes five minutes is not enough to do that, but. You, you have to start at least give in, that is your argument, backing up your policy. And then your deputy is going to finish, that is the mission. Okay, so there is uh, no uh, uh, a format or a specific format for the, for the role of each speaker. Like, for example, the PP, we have to, for example, welcome and then uh, say our policy and then argument uh, or, or what so else. Yeah, uh, it depends on the role of the speaker. But there is no uh, specific format for each speaker in the Oxford. Like we can say policy and argument, and then on, on if the if the if five minutes isn't enough, then we can say only the policy, and uh, my uh, my colleague will continue about the arguments. Okay, Marwa, do you want to answer her? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Um, okay, so this is really an important question because I had the same questions when um, when I uh, when I was debating Oxford this, uh, the first time. So the idea is that we need to look at uh, Oxford debate uh, format as an um, an elevated form of BP. It's not very different from BP, except that we don't do the framing. So technically, none of the speakers will do the framing like in BP, because the moderator will be the one presenting the policy. So the way we should look at it is that the government brought this bill of dissolving the WHO, brought it to the attention of the moderator. The moderator started by presenting this, uh, this case, and then, like what happens in parliaments all over the world, they, uh, they will ask uh, the moderator, they will ask the uh, government to present the case, how are they um, willing to, um, to uh, actually execute the case and what kind of argument to back up because as a government I can't just say that I'm going to put a law that bans smoking tomorrow without backing it with uh, arguments. So of course arguments are a key component especially or mainly in the opening statements. Um, so the idea of Oxford that it will allow you to um, to get to the core or to deepen up your uh, your arguments throughout the debate um, because you won't have the chance and I'm now I'm speaking uh, way forward you won't have the chance to uh, talk as a speaker only in the opening statements the opening statements should be the um, the opening of the debate why are why are we debating this and how are we going to execute our uh, our policy. Um, so yeah, I hope this simplifies it more, but the way we go through the format with, with Reem, the more we will understand uh, how, um, how it actually occurs. Yeah. Exactly. Just like Marwa said, this is just the opening uh, remarks. So you, you as a speaker, you will, have, you will find the time to address uh, uh, all the issues that you want to address. Uh, and we'll move on with the, with the format and we're going to see how it is. So, uh, does anyone have any questions so far regarding the, uh, the opening remarks? No, all right. Now, moving on, uh, of course, to the intra panel discussion. And this is actually uh, the fun part and the difficult part. Uh, the part that really makes uh, Oxford style uh, unique. And um, the kind that, uh, ma that, is, that makes uh, the debate really, uh, it helps the audience really get involved uh, and uh, the people to really have a say in what they say. So here, the duration is have 20 minutes. It is guided by uh, uh, the moderated question and uh, uh, statements made in the opening remarks. So what is this uh, inter-panel discussion? Mainly, it's, uh, it's a discussion between the moderator and the debater. That is, they are going to, um, or the moderator has questions for each uh, for each side, the opposition and the proposition. Uh, and, yeah. and he or she, uh, he or she is going to ask these questions to uh, mm. the speakers. Of, um, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Hasitalik, but there is a little problem with uh, your internet connection, I think. We can't hear you well. Can, can you hear me now? Now it's good, yeah. Now it's good. All right, good. So uh, here, there are a lot of variations on how this intra-panel dis discussion goes, but uh, what we went for here is, since it is, uh, it is, 20 minutes, we are going to divide, uh, uh, I mean, this interpanel discussion into five minutes for each speaker, just like the opening remarks. But of course, here there is, um, the, or there are different roles. Uh, so we, the first thing the speaker is going to do is to respond to the question the moderator has for them, and then the, rebut the statements uh, made uh, by the opposition on the other, on the other hand. So um, here, if we want to summarize, the intra-panel discussion is about answering questions, that is the question addressed to them by the moderator, and then uh, the rebuttal of the statements uh, or, or of uh, that is uh, the points of view that have been made uh, by the opposition or by the government. So uh, this is the intra-panel discussion. Uh, of course, they, uh, the moderator has to have uh, like the same questions uh, for uh, both sides. I mean, you can't 
have like three questions for the government and only two for the opposition. You have to have equal questions for both for both sides. Yes, question about this intra-panel discussion? I have a question, if you may. Yes. Um, so in the intra-panel discussion, uh, do the speakers again go by order or um, does the moderator ask their questions to one side and it's up to them to decide how to divide their 10 minutes? I, yes, it's up to them how to divide their 10 minutes. So, uh, of course, um, and logically, the moderator will start with the government and they are going to divide their 10 minutes between rebutting and uh, answering uh, the question. But it's not necessary for each um, for each speaker to speak for five minutes. I mean, they can do whatever they want with their time, right? Like yes, one can speak for nine minutes and the other for one minute, if they'll well, allow it. <laughs> they can do that, but we, we, we try to go for um, this level. We try to go yeah, for- Yeah, I got it. That is a format, like five minutes, five minutes, in order to allow everyone to, to, uh, to participate. But yes, I mean, if you are seasoned debaters like you are, <laughs> you can do whatever. <laughs> whatever you want with your time. That's called dictatorship, but yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. I, thanks for answering my question. You're welcome. Anyone? Do you want to uh, have something to add about this inter-panel discussion? Just, um, just one yes, question remark. So in the, in the introduction of panel, in the first, oh, in the opening remarks, uh, five minutes, five minutes is going to be alternate. So there shouldn't be any really rebuttals or addressing the other team until the inter-panel discussion. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. It's preferable that you don't rebut. I mean, uh, okay. some people do it, by the way, but don't do that. Just focus on your opening statement. All right, cool. Any questions? All right, good. Can you all hear me? Can you all see me? Because, oh, okay, great. Now the, the part questions and answer. The Q&A uh, between now, the interaction, happens between the audience and the debaters. So we said that the moderator challenges the both opposition and government. Now it's the turn of the audience to, to challenge, okay? And this is why uh, Oxford debate style or Oxford, Oxford style debate is so, um, that is unique. Because the moderator takes questions from the audience. And of course you can't predict the audience, uh, the questions that, is, that are coming from the audience. So it's really challenging and the debaters should actually be very, should really listen to the questions and try to, to, to answer them. So of course, just like uh, that is uh, the inter-panel discussion, uh, the questions uh, should be equally divided, that is between, um, between both uh, sides, between the government and the opposition. So here, um, the moderator asks uh, the, uh, the, uh, the audience to, to, to ask a question for government and for the opposition, and then uh, they, they get to answer. And it spans between 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, some formats say it's just 10. Uh, here it's 10 from 15 minutes, especially because online the moderator has to pick mainly um, uh, the questions from comments maybe or from the people who are um, uh, present. Yes, Marwa. Marwa? So Marwa wants to say something. I don't know if she can hear me. Which Marwa? Marwa Abi Farad. <laughs> Marwa from Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, the audience uh, will choose which debater to answer. For example, if the question is addressed to the, uh, to the opposition or to the government, for example, so uh, the audience will will uh, will say, for example, uh, I need the first debater to answer the question, or no, it's uh, it's our, no, our choice. No, no, no. Uh, you know, you you remember the government and the opposite. They are two teams. They are teams. So they they are dealing, I mean, they are together. So uh, the audience member would go like, I have a question for the the, the government, or I have a question for the opposition. And 
then, of course, they can choose among themselves. Yes, Marla, want to add something? Yes. Um, so for the Q&A, uh, this is the different part from the BP because we said that um, Oxford is an elevated version of BP. It's actually better than BP, but let's not say that. Um, so the, 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 the audience has the chance to ask questions and the goal here is not just to get answers from the debaters. And this is the sneaky part. This is an additional chance for the debaters or for the positions, government and opposition, to try to delay, um, relay the vote in their favor. Um, so by putting 10 to 15 minutes um, uh, ta as time for, for these Q&A, um, we're basically uh, limiting. So the moderator, technically how it will go, the moderator will uh, open the floor for questions. Um, they, he or she will take the questions for the government and for the opposition. So it won't be like an immediate answer. And that's just to save time. So let's just say the government received three questions, the opposition received three questions. Um, they will have seven minutes each, depending if it's 15 minutes. Uh, they will have seven minutes each to answer these three questions um, in a speech. Um, in this, it depends on the strategy of the team, um, because a team can choose to um, answer in two, uh, in two speakers, or they can choose to answer in one speaker. Um, we have been advised to only limit it to one speaker just because it shows more consistency and um, it helps you um, just like control your timing more and with that get more uh, more uh, votes in your favor later on. Um, so yeah, how it will go online, I believe that questions will be taken from the audience via chat and the moderator will uh, later on distribute the questions to uh, both sides accordingly. I hope I answered. I mean, uh I have just a question. Uh, yeah. Concerning the questions, will we receive all of the questions at once and then answer them together, or will we receive a question, answer, question, answer? It's more of a cluster of questions just to, to save time, and also because questions kind of um, are um, connected to each other, so it will help you make more cohesive response in a speech. Yeah. Exactly, Marwa. So just like Marwa said, so sometimes uh, the, uh, like two audience members have a question, uh, two questions that are related, so you can actually just uh, come up with uh, an answer for, for both questions or come up with a speech that answers all the questions that have been uh, and, uh, asked. Yes. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, uh, my question is about the time. How much time does each speaker or each debater have when it comes to answering the question? I mean, are, are we limited by time or what? In, in the answers. Does the moderator yes. give a specific time to answer like two, three minutes or the debaters yes. are too short? Exactly, I mean, usually it's in the span between 10 to, to 15 minutes between asking the questions and uh, and answering them. So once you have figured out that is your your answer and you have finished uh, that is your answer, I think uh, it's uh, I mean it's, it's pretty flexible when it comes to questions and answers from the audience. Okay, so no interruptions from the moderator or anything. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we have the closing remarks. Now, closing remarks are pretty brief, two minutes per speech. And of course, after you finish the Q&A time, you just, you, you're going to have a go. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I'm yelling. Can you hear me? No, it's, it's not a, about yelling, it's, it's cutting. Problem. It's not about yelling, yeah. So it's not about yelling. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Sorry for the technical issues. All right, so here we have the closing remarks. Uh, in total, there are four minutes, and we have uh, two minutes per speech, and that is two minutes for the government and two minutes for the, uh, two minutes for the opposition. And of course, they're going to choose a representative who's going to deliver, that is, uh, the closing uh, remarks. Now, closing remarks, they're not like a whip speech, but 
that I mean, you are, it's your last opportunity, your last chance to actually sway the vote, uh, your last chance to convince them that you are winning the debate and that you have come up with the, the best that is, uh, uh, arguments, etc. So this is, uh, I mean, they are just two minutes, so they, they, they have to be some kind of, uh, not sensational speech, but in a, in a way as to, to really try to sway the vote that is in your favor. This is, uh, this is I mean, about the closing remarks. Uh, Maro, do you want to add something about the closing remarks? Can you hear me? Open your mic, Maru. Uh. Um, I said I will talk once my time comes. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so after the closing remarks now we have, uh, does anyone first have a, a comment on the closing remarks? No, all right, good. So the last thing is uh, the final vote. So the winner, of course, um, there are competitive uh, debates that are held in Oxford style, but uh, m mostly uh, we use Oxford style for, uh, for policy debates, so we don't really have the competitive style. Uh, and the winner, you know, the winner of, of the debate is decided on the extent of change uh, that happens in both of the courts, meaning the, if you remember, First, we have an initial vote where we have people voting yes, no, or undecided. After the debate, we're going to see if uh, that is uh, these people kept the same opinion or they have changed. Uh, that is their opinion. The, uh, we, how do we uh, decide the winner in the in the percentages of that change? We gauge that is the percentage of change. And uh, that's how we decide uh, how, uh, I mean, who the winner is. And that is why when we talk about Oxford style, we are actually talking about bringing real change. And that is actually getting the people to vote for you, to vote for your policy after you have already spoken and after ha you have already backed up your, um, your argument. This is how, uh, this is, that is the action that takes, uh, that takes place that is in real life. When you change your mind or you say the same, even after hearing what both uh, sides uh, said about that uh, resolution or that, uh, or that bill. Clear? All right. That's pretty much it. Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, this is a kind of rough, that uh, is a draft about uh, or structure of um, uh, of the Oxford style debate format. Now, Marwa has uh, already participated uh, last year in, uh, in Tunisia's NDF uh, in, uh, in an Oxford uh, style debate. So she has, she's going to give you uh, more practical uh, tips uh, away from the theoretical uh, part that I've been talking about. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, the floor is yours, Marwa. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Reem. Um, so um, I tried to share some of the things that I have learned during that debate throughout um, the conversation so far. So um, the ND, in the NDF uh, last year, it was my first time uh, debating uh, Oxford and the motion was also as hardcore as this one. It was, uh, this house believes that the uh, direct election system has failed the people and I was uh, a prime minister. So uh, it was quite uh, the, uh, the challenge and that's why in my mind I associate Oxford to more controversial kind of uh, topics. So um, as uh, a prime minister and as uh, a government, um, I work together with my, uh, with my teammate um, to come up with our, uh, not only our arguments, but also our, uh, act, not action plan, but more of like, um, our background. Why are we bringing this bill to um, to the uh, to the house? Because we were the ones um, defending it. Um, so we tried. Our strategy was to um, 
to uh, divide our time, um, not necessarily equally, but depending on what we have to say about the topic. Um, so when we did our research, uh, we didn't do our research together, but we did it in terms of actually researching different aspects of, of the topic just to make us gain time in terms of when answering question, one of us will be more knowledgeable about it than the other. Um, so in the opening uh, remarks, um, the, the, the Oxford as, as a whole, as a debate format, is more of like a de deconstructed um, BP. And I like the construct, uh, construction movement. Um, so when uh, in the opening remarks, uh, we uh, we started by um, analyzing why the um, I'm talking about the example of direct vote here. Uh, analyzing why direct vote is um, is no longer good. How um, examples on how it failed the people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We backed it up by argument, and then the opposition, of course, presented why they want to keep uh, this uh, um, direct uh, voting system and they backed it up by argument, etc., etc. And with the second speaker, we presented um, how we want to actually um, annul this direct, uh, direct election uh, system. And then later on, we moved to the um, intra-panel intra uh, discussion, which is um, kind of um, a throwback to Karl Popper, um, to, uh, to some of you who are aware of uh, Karl Popper. It's more of like a cross-examination um, because we had the chance to uh, not only rebut what the other team, so we know that rebuttal is um, deconstructing or destroying the uh, opponent's uh, case while you are building your case uh, again or rebuilding your case again on it. Um, so that's the good part about the intra-panel uh, intra, uh, um, discussion is that we had the chance to directly confront each other uh, with uh, our policies and, uh, and arguments and bring the policies uh, the um, counter arguments, all of that in the uh, intrapanel uh, discussion. Um, then when we move to uh, the Q&A, um, oh, first, we had a meeting with the moderator before the debate was started, um, just as a formality to present our, our bill initially. So then the moderator, I'll go back. Then the moderator, when we moved to, back to uh, the Q&A, he opened the floor and selected um, the members of the audience who wanted to ask questions. And we had to take notes of the questions um, and then um, agree between each other, between like me and my, uh, my teammate and the other team on who is going to answer the question. So there's a timekeeper and there will be also a timekeeper in, uh, in this debate um, who will keep reminding you of how much time you have as a whole. Uh, we had, I believe, about eight, uh, eight, seven, eight minutes, which is kind of the same here. It's 15 minutes for Q&A, so seven minutes for each team, one minute for like the moderator to take questions and uh, so on. Um, so when we answered uh, the questions, we answered them in a bulk, in a way of rebutting the other team while highlighting our case again and uh, bring in more information that the audience did not necessarily uh, had the chance to, uh, to get. So this is the Q&A. And in the Q&A, the government, of course, uh, starts answering the questions and then the opposition. Um, lastly, with the, um, with the final remarks, um, it's a two minute uh, speech and you decide, I mean, if, if you decide to divide it with your with your uh, teammate, I would say that it's not the best uh, idea, honestly, uh, because two minutes are barely enough to move people on your side. Um, so the last remarks are basically Khitab um, Muneshda, what do you call it? Um, in which you call people to vote in your favor. Uh, because uh, the voting um, in the uh, Oxford advocacy, thank you, Marwa, <laughs> exactly. You'll be advocating for a case um, because the, 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 go, the audience is the one who decides whether that, uh, that bill passes or not, or that resolution passes or not. 
and uh, you will try to advocate as much as you can for uh, the case you're bringing. So then uh, when the vote swings, you can win. So yeah, um, it's kind of, um, it's different from uh, the whip speech in the uh, MVPT in the sense that uh, you won't have to um, summarize uh, the whole debate, but you can bring attention and it's advice to bring attention to uh, the most important points uh, in the debate. Of course, bring attention to the point where you were had uh, stronger, um, stronger, uh, him, what, stronger opinion or stronger uh, case than uh, your opponent. And I would say don't use it a lot in rebutting them because they won't. <laughs> they won't, you won't have the chance to rebut what they rebut you after you. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> but honestly, it was, it was really fun. I really liked uh, Oxford debate um, format um, because it was really interactive and it pushed people to think about the motion at hand um, because people can access our debates in the NDF uh, throughout the day, but he, he, they are not challenged per se to, uh, to think about their opinion in regards to certain, uh, to certain topics. But when you include people um, in a section, in a quite big section, in a quarter of the debate, they will be more motivated to think about it and maybe revise their opinions and, uh, and thoughts. So yeah, it's fair to say that um, we lost that debate, <laughs> but <laughs> it was because people <laughs> don't pay attention to individual votes. So I say that, yeah, no, direct election system failed us, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Marwa, for this fruitful sharing. Uh, anyone has uh, a question? I guess Marwa Abi Faraj. Thank you, Wassam. Yes. yes uh, Marwa. Uh, uh, concerning the closing remark, as you mentioned, Marwa, it's uh, quite different with, uh, from the BP format for the fourth, uh, the fourth sp speaker or the whip, uh, uh, the whip speech. But uh, I want I hear it comes the question if. Uh, uh, we have to highlight on our stronger uh, or the most strong uh, uh, argument that we have already uh, talked about in the in the steps before. Um, so, uh, are we? Um, uh, the question is: and, um, Can we come up with a new argument? For example, not argument. I know that two minutes is not enough, but I mean a new idea to share or to talk about while uh, doing the close remark. Or no, it's like the like the fourth uh, fourth speaker and the BP that no more arguments or no new ideas. Maybe new examples, but not uh, new uh, no ideas. Sorry. Um, okay. That, that's actually a good question because um, it depends on the strategy of the team, I would say. It's not very wise to bring um, new arguments to the table at the last two minutes for two reasons. Um, first, because two minutes are not enough to elaborate enough to gain more, ad more people on your side. And second, because if your argument is not well structured in the last two minutes, that's what people are going to remember. They're not going to remember what you were talking about throughout the whole debate. They're going to remember what you said last, which was shaky a bit. So that's why it's not advised um, to bring new material to, uh, to the debate at the end. Uh, you can bring um, other, um, examples or details yes of course you're going to swing you're trying to swing more votes in your favor but to try to convince people at the last two minutes um, is quite a challenging um mission so yeah this um, is honest, yeah that's my question so, of course like, like, like you sent sorry 
Uh, of course, as you said, uh, definitely correct, and I totally agree about new arguments because two minutes uh, isn't enough at, at all. Because and uh, it uh, could be like a negative point on on you because you will not be able to express all the positive things that you already mentioned before and the and the before speeches and then come up with a new argument. But I said I my point was about new ideas. For example, uh, while uh, okay, new examples, Akid, we can do this, but new ideas if we didn't. Uh, mentioned them before and we saw that uh, it's good now to uh, to pass them by those two minutes then we can do that right i mean honestly it depends on on the situation you're in we can judge and say no don't bring new material at all to the debate if you judge as a team or as a speaker that bringing this new detail um, to the debate will help you um, balance the debate in your favor then yes of course, why not? I mean, it's been mainly based on how well you can swing votes in your favor. Um, and you're free to use those two minutes uh, as you want. But I would like to go back to the point that you mentioned in the chat, the have an unhealth scenario. It's a very essential uh, component of the last speech uh, because this uh, scenario, this have an unhealth, their world, our world, is uh, quite a strong um, uh, technique to use because it is based on contrast between their case and your case and how your case is better. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I hope I answered your question. Can I add something? Can I add something? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So just remember, I mean, you are within the vote. You, you are within the vote. It's just like I don't know if you're familiar with Frank Andrews from House of Cards, but you are within the vote. <laughs> So you have, you are actually, uh, that is reminding people why you're, I mean, why you are the winner. That is, I have said this argument that is pretty strong and this is going to make the world a much better place. So that's why we are better. So I think that maybe uh, you should uh, use those two minutes to do that rather than uh, bring new ideas like Marwa said, because I don't think that you can you can develop a, 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 a decent idea in, in, in two minutes that would leave as much impact as um, the ideas that you have already said and that you are actually reiterating again in the, that is, uh, the speech. I believe also Ines had a question because I saw her uh, no, it's not a question, it's just a remark because I mentioned the heaven and hell scenario. I believe this last speech should be emotional and theatrical in order to leave a good final impact on the audience because it's not, it's not uh, beneficial for us as debaters to, to come up with a new argument or with a new idea because everything has already been presented and rebutted earlier. So our last impression should be very emotional, like presenting that we are looking for saving humanity, for example, or coming up with the best, uh, with, or bringing humanity to live in, the be in a better world. That is our last, uh, that is our last, that is the last impact we should leave on, on an audience if you want to sway them. That's it. Yeah, totally. It's 100% a persuasive, uh, a persuasive speech. I wouldn't say that it's um, emotional. Um, I mean, we don't want another, like, I don't want to mention exact leaders of the world, but we don't want, like, other scenarios of other leaders in the world who mainly use emotion as a way of, um, of persua persuading uh, the people. Uh, we want to keep it, of course, uh, uh, factual, um, informative, um, and also uh, pushes in the good of the people, because that's mainly one of the reasons why we, uh, we debate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other questions before we move on to the uh, last session? Okay, no questions. So uh, thank you very much, Marwa and Dream, for the fruitful sessions. Uh, thank you very much. Moving on to the last session, links and references. 
Bassem Suisse, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ali. Hello again, guys. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, having accepted our invitation and for your, uh, your willingness to uh, participate in this first Oxford public debate in the region. Uh, thanks, Irene, for this great introduction to the, the Oxford format and Marwa for sharing your experience with us. Uh, so, in my uh, brief intervention, I will not add new information because Rim and Marwa uh, say everything that can be said with uh, precision and with uh, detail. I will only provide uh, a set of uh, references that we have compiled for you that can help you uh, further uh, understand this format and facilitate your preparation for the debate. So Ale uh, will uh, share with you, you uh, the drive link in command uh, session where you will find the introduction provided by Reem uh, in addition to the file uh, that Rabeb shared with us after the training of master facilitators held in Tunisia which uh, contains the most important uh, point uh, that must be addressed in relation uh, to this model of debate. Uh, in this link, you will find uh, links to very important debates during which the Oxford format uh, was ad uh, adopted, and these debates can help uh, you learn uh, more about how such debates are held. Uh, you, uh, you will also uh, find a very important document that contains a bunch of tips that enable good preparation for such, uh, for, uh, such debates. I hope this information will help you prepare uh, for this debate and I wish you the best of luck in the debate, uh, which I'm sure that will be a wonderful one. Please feel free to contact me uh, if you have any question or comments. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Bassem. Um, does anyone have access to the link, guys? Have you tried it? Okay, um, so can it be shared into the WhatsApp group? Okay. Thank we you. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Into the messenger one, Ali. Okay. Uh, it's. I shared it in the chat, isn't it? You you cannot open it from there. I can't yeah, click I it and I can't copy it. Yeah. Yes, we will uh, share it in uh, okay. the WhatsApp group. Okay, I will share it in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group for uh, the debaters and the messenger group for the viewers. Okay. Uh, can I say something, Ali? Yes, yes, Ali. We're going to find a lot of details about the content of each uh, that is the speech and how it should be. Uh, uh, and also, um, you're going to find lots of variations, so don't really get uh, confused when it comes to the format. Uh, the format uh, that we're going to adopt is the one that you're going to find in the slides that I have just shown. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, now we're gonna move on to, we're going to move to uh, to the draw and we, we need to fix the, the sides of each debater for the regional debate and for the mock debate. And, and also we need to uh, identify a motion for the mock debate. So first we will start by the draw. Uh, Rim, can, uh, can you proceed with the draw with your uh, computer, please? If it's possible. Okay, I'm going to try. Okay. And Rahma, please, if you can share share the the screen of uh, of Rim. If I can find it first, <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Marwa left the meeting and for because she has another meeting and we need to find a replacement. I can't find the, I can't find it. Sorry. Where can I find it? Can you tell me? Uh, we only need to share the screen like we did er earlier with the presentation. Okay. I don't have it. I don't have it. Okay. Uh, Rahma, are you with us? Yes, I'm checking. So, uh, uh, 
now what's going to happen is withdrawal for um, for the debate, uh, the, the mock debate that we're going to have. And um, the same draw is going to be, uh, of course, not done, but uh, the same, that is the vision of speakers is going to take place uh, in the, the debate itself. That is, the, the people who are going to be government in the, um, in the, in the mock debate are going to be government in uh, the uh, the I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you well, uh, Rim. You were saying? No, I was saying that um, uh, this draw that we're going to do right now for the mock debate, uh, it's going to be the same, I mean, uh, for, the, uh, for the debate itself. That is, the people who are going to be government now for the mock debate okay. are going to be a government in the... Um, that is the debate itself on the night. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we, are, we are going just to do one draw. That's mm -hmm. what you meant. Yes, yes. okay. Uh, first, be, uh, while we uh, fix the technical issues, can we start uh, by brainstorming for the Mac debate uh, motion? We want to hear your ideas for that. Uh, the last time in the first regional debate, we went for uh, a funny, a very funny motion actually. Uh, which was um, uh, هذا المجلس أن البيتزا يجب أن تكون مربعة بالشكل. That was the motion of our first mock debate, and we would like to hear some uh, ideas uh, like just like that for for this mock debate. Any ideas, guys? Uh, we're we're brainstorming motions for the mock debate. Yes. So we're not going to debate the same motion. No, no, of course not. Yes, if anyone. Okay. We want it to be like a real debate, of course. It won't be that is a, okay. a debate. <laughs> but we just want a fun debate that is to get to be really familiarized with, um, with, with the, the format. format. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah, like guys, we want to hear your ideas. Yeah. Uh, it has to be fun, Adlin. You know, I know that you can be fun. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking of much. Um. Marwa and Fatima, do you have ideas for the motion, for the fun motion? You mean how you just pull out the hamam zajl? Okay, if I may suggest, I have a few ideas. I will. Uh, I'm gonna write them down in the chat. It's going to be in Arabic, Ali. No, in English. Friends is better than how I met your mother. That's undebatable. That's unfair. That is extremely debatable. I beg you. Sorry. Oh, no. I think I think we have a debate here. <laughs> Already from the very first suggestion, right? <laughs> okay, guys. Any uh any opinions about the proposed ideas? I think I like the very first one. I will take the first one. Yeah. Yeah, same. But as long as I get to be on the how I met your mother side. I'll, I'll be on the friend side. <laughs> There's a draw, you guys. There's a draw. <laughs> it has to be random, but. Uh... Okay. Okay. Let's let's vote. Let's vote using the chat. Okay. So it can be more pr practical.
Okay, we have two votes. The rest of you guys, we need your votes or we need new ideas. So we have Tasneem here, Adlen, Fatima. Three votes until now. If you guys have new, have have other ideas, we can take them. So Adlin suggested another motion. Okay. If we're going to deal with high cost marriages, I'd like to suggest this house would make women pay al mahar instead of men. Okay. Okay, this is very challenging. Okay. What do you think, guys? Girls, what do you think, girls? Okay, so Fatima is four. Okay. Uh huh. Yalla guys, we need to we need to finish very soon. Okay, Ines vote two. Nur vote three. Okay. Ali, just Marwa have some uh, technical problems, so Hector Jata, bus management. Okay. Marwa Abi Faraj. Okay, we will let her in right now. Meanwhile, let's continue, guys, with the vote. With the votes, please.
Okay, I think we should go with the uh, with the first with the first motion, no? We have two motions qualified to, to the finals. The first motion of friends and how I met your mother and the second motion proposed by Adlan. Banning high cost marriages is very interesting as a motion. Okay. And uh, Adnan's point could be an argument inside it, inside that motion. Um, I think I'm going to have to take off my vote from the very first motion, because if I ever have to debate for friends, that's against my ethics and morals. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you have to debate against your morals, your ethics. That's the point. <laughs> I think we should abandon the draw and just give Fatima to defend uh, how I met your mother, right? <laughs> Thanks. That's really nice. It's, it's, it's an undefendable position. How are you going to do that? Watch me. <laughs> we have a debate right here. I think we should go for the first one. I mean, because lots of tension already happening, so. <laughs> okay, guys, we need a decision. Hi, guys, again. So, yeah, I lost the connection, so uh, I didn't get your point. What are you discussing now? So, brainstorming about uh, the possible motions. If you look at the chat box, you will find uh, the motions. Marwa? For the MOOC debate. For the MOOC debate, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but because I left, the, uh, I left the meeting, so the chat box is uh, empty now. Can someone ah, okay. uh, share it again? Okay. So basically, we have uh, two motions. Uh, this house would vote for Friends as a better TV show than How I Met Your Mother. That's the first motion. And the second motion proposed by Adlen is uh, this house would make uh, women pull uh, al-mahar instead of men. You guys write the motion down and at the chat box. Yeah. Yes, I will. Marwa, just uh, check your uh, WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp, you will find uh, a screenshot about uh, the motion proposed by uh, Adlin, by Ali, Adlin, and the other uh, one. I'm thinking about who's, uh, who's the one put those. Uh... <laughs> you know what I heck emotions. <laughs> Maybe I go for the second one. <laughs> well, then high cost marriages, maybe. I don't know. 
Definitely. Uh, uh, friends, yes. as show, no. and not Brad Pitt doesn't deserve Angelina Jolie. Uh, Marwa? Yep. I've then proposed another motion. Uh, I mean, when it comes to uh, high cost marriages, he said this house would make a women free and not instead of men. So, maybe that's Jenny equality. Mm -hmm. That's his, uh, his, that's his proposition. Uh, maybe we can use the motion uh, for uh, I don't know if it suits all the all the countries about um, uh, hmm? but yeah but we're looking we're kind of trying to to debate something fun you know just like to, to experiment with the that is uh, with the format so it's not something fun that's why we put this these motions. So I think Zawaj Madani is quite serious. Uh, yes. We want something fun for the mock debate. And what's the majority vote now? The vote of the okay. majority. Let, let's um, uh, make our options like, to, let's make the two options. I say we, we, uh, we include uh, the first motion, this house would will vote for Friends as the better TV show than How I Met Your Mother. And I think uh, Adlan's motion, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, like, you have to choose between the, these two. Yeah, like we have to choose one of them. Because... Uh... We I can think everyone is okay with friends and how I met your mother. Okay, everyone is okay with uh, this motion. Did anyone have another proposition or uh, any uh, thing to say about this motion? Any objection? Okay. Okay, and Fatima are in. Okay, so so the motion is this house would vote for friends as a better TV show. So what's your vote, Ali? You're a debater too, you know, in this debate. Uh, okay, yes, I uh, I propose the motion, so <laughs> I was <laughs> I'm automatically uh, in. <laughs> okay, so you're in for the first one. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the to the draw. Can uh, everyone see my screen here? My... Hello? Yes, yes we can. I think something is wrong with the internet connection. Okay. Can uh, everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. So here we are going to type the uh, names of the, of the debaters and automatically the website will give us the, uh, the, the teams, okay? Uh, okay, uh, the draw, the first draw, or it, it'll be only one draw. The draw that we are going to do right now will be the draw of the mock debate. Okay, it means, uh, for example, if Adlan here will, uh, if the draw gives that Adlan will be in the government side, uh, uh, in the mock debate, in the regional debate, he will be on the opposition side. Understood, everyone? So Sorry, it's going to come again? Opposite, going to be the opposite, Ali. I'm sorry, so, I couldn't hear you. Ali is sharing uh, his screen with us and he will do uh, the poll. Yes, but it's going to be the opposite. Uh, the, uh, the draw we are going to do right now will be for the mock debate. Okay? The size, the, cho the uh, affected size will be uh, for the mock debate. 
Uh, and for the regional uh, online debate, it will be the opposite. For example, if this draw gives that Adlan is in the government side, you will be on the government side for the mark debate, but you will be on the, on the opposition side for uh, the real debate, okay? Didn't Reem before say that we're going to keep the same votes at the same um, draw? I'm sorry? I'm sorry, Reem? No, no, I said that the same draw, we're going to keep it for the regional one. This is the same oh, I, I thought you said I thought you said you're gonna keep the uh, the opposite. Okay. No, no, the same draw. Just no, no, like we will keep uh, keep them uh, like this. Okay, we will keep the same uh, size then. Okay, dear. So uh, here we have Adlan, YMV master facilitator from Algeria, our first debater. We have Marwa. YMV Master Facilitator from Lebanon. We have also Fatima. Fatima. EYMV, EYMV Master Facilitator from Morocco. And myself. Ale, EYMV Master, Ale, Facilitator, Master from Facilitator from Tunisia. Okay, concerning the teams, government. And opposition brace yourself Fatima my heart is pounding <laughs> oh, okay, we should, I really uh, don't want to be with friends if you and I are the, if you and I are on the same team one of us is going to argue for what they hate one of us is gonna have to kill the other dead <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so for the government we have Adlan and Ale and the up for the opposition we have Marwa and Fatima. It's gonna be boys versus girls. Boys or, versus girls, yes. Of course girls are going to win. <laughs> okay. And of course this we is the teams also Adlan. for the regional debate. Yes. Okay. Okay, everything is clear for everyone. Do you guys have any questions? No, let's do sides. I'm sorry, Adlan? No, I said no. Okay. Fatima, Marwa, do you have anything to add or any question? I just want to reiterate that how I Met Your Mother is the best show ever. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, our peer facilitators, anything to add? Nothing, okay. So thank you very much everyone for uh, being here today. Uh, we will see you uh, in two days. We will see you on Wednesday uh, at 3 p.m. Tunisia time. Uh, I will be annoying you with messages uh, as usual. And uh, stay safe and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys, for your time. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoy preparing for this debate. So all the uh, Tunisian colleagues, really, you're doing uh, such great uh, work. And um, Tunisia is always um, always a good example uh, to motivate us when uh, doing the Lebanese meeting. So uh, thank you, Marwa. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Marwa, for this great. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. And uh, wait, how do you say it? Saha <laughs> Shribitkum. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.